challenge this week is to do something you've never done before. And I struggled a bit with this one. Um, can't really travel to too many new different places at the minute or can't really do anything like bungee jumping or anything crazy like that. So um, yeah, I thought about what could I do with photography and I've got a Polaroid camera. So uh, I thought, yeah, why not try taking some landscapes with a Polaroid camera? So yeah, I've got that. I've come out to the Peak District and uh, I'm gonna try it out. It's gonna be fun, I hope. So yeah, like I said, I've brought my Polaroid camera. My wife and I actually bought this for our wedding so that we could take some quick snaps and people could put them in our uh, wedding and photo album. And it's a Fujifilm Instax 100. It's pretty old now. It runs on AA batteries and it's massive. <laughs> but um, it does get some pretty cool results. It's not got any, many options. It has got a flash, uh, which I won't be using today, obviously. I've got two options for light and dark and it's quite bright today, so I'm putting on dark. I think hopefully that'll just stop it being overexposed and then there's just two focus modes which is like one which is three meters to infinity and one which is 0 0.9 to three meters so i'll be using the uh, three meters to infinity and uh, yeah see if we can get some good shots with it so a quick interjection here um, there are quite a few famous people, believe it or not, have used Polaroids uh, for their work. So people like Andy Warhol, David Hockney, and perhaps most notably for what I'm doing now is Ansel Adams. He was at uh, one point, I think, an ambassador for Polaroid and did some of his work uh, with the instant camera format. Uh, so yeah, um, I've seen one of them. Um, um, uh, if you Google, you know, Ansel Adams Polaroids, it's like a kind of, it's really got a really blue hue to it um, and there's like a flower in the foreground like a mountain and might be El Capitan I'm not sure but it looks amazing it's got this like it's just a softness to it and it just looks so like enchanted almost and like magical because it's got this like kind of soft and it's this flowery kind of effect to it and yeah really good um, so I recommend going checking that out and all of Ansel Adams work of course uh, so yeah I, I just want to say you know there's um, you know it has been done before it's not polaroid is not just about taking snaps of your friends and things it's uh, it can be used artistically and uh, it's just about how you use your tools really it's not there's not a right or wrong really Definitely think this is a cool place to get a Polaroid, so lots of shadow, dark and light areas. It's going to look really cool. So I've just got this scene, and look at that. It's already developing. How cool is that? You know, quicker than digital. <laughs> You've got to go home and go into Lightroom to get that kind of result. Uh, so yeah, brilliant. I like doing that. I like overlay. <laughs> that was pretty cool. One time. So, it seems it takes a bit longer to walk around the reservoir than I thought. <laughs> 
Uh, so we're, we're well into the midday sun now. Um, that's all right. It's pretty warm, but it's really nice. You can see down there, look, the reservoir. Um, I think I've got some okay shots. I found out that, yeah, you can't focus on anything too close with the Polaroid camera. Uh, I think 0.9 meters is the minimum focusing distance. I saw some nice peacock butterflies and I thought it'd be nice to get one of those. But there's no chance it's out of focus. So I'm sticking to the big stuff, landscapey type shots of the reservoir and the mountains behind. And uh, I'm finding it really fun. It's, you know, you can't play with any settings or anything. It's like, it's point and shoot, find a nice composition, something that looks nice, point and see what you get. And there's something really fun about that. So yeah, all good. So I'm pretty pleased with this composition. Here's my Polaroid, still developing. Don't know if you can see that there. But uh, yeah, I think that's a really nice composition. I'm quite pleased with the Polaroid I got from that. Okay, so back now. It's actually nearly a week uh, later now since I filmed the, that bit of footage, uh, but didn't need to wait around for anything to be developed or <laughs> any Lightroom processing because, uh, yeah, they're all on Polaroids. That's one of the beauty of the Polaroids, it's just so instant, it pops straight out there. So it was, um, it was a lovely day uh, last weekend. It was actually Derwent Reservoir in the Peak District where I went and uh, it's a great walk, um, it's around about 10 miles or so around the reservoir. So it took a good few hours, especially because I was taking a lot of photographs and stopping a lot. But it was, uh, like I say, a really nice day. It was really hot, but you can't complain in UK too much when it's hot because <laughs> it's not often hot. And um, it was really fun. I really enjoyed using the uh, Polaroid, well I shouldn't say Polaroid camera, it's actually an instant camera. One of the things I've found out is uh, Polaroid is just a brand name, so it's kind of like saying Hoover for a vacuum cleaner. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed using it because it's just so simple, you know. A lot of the time when you're using a DSLR, or you're messing around with all the aperture and trying to get the exposure out, the shutter speed and ISO, and you know, don't get me wrong, I enjoy that, but um, something really liberating uh, by using something so simple. So I really like that, and I, I like the the style of you know the, the vintage look of the um, the Polaroids when they come out. I mean, they're obviously a, there's not a lot of contrast in. Well, there is a lot of contrast actually, but some of the areas are overexposed, uh, so you end up with the, these kind of large areas of where there's not a lot of detail, and it, it's just a bit too bright and overexposed. But that just adds to the effect, and it's obviously a bit soft in areas. But it's kind of got that that look of, um, I mean, the camera's nearly 20 years old and it's got that look of photographs from when you were a child. So it's, it's kind of nostalgic in a way when you when you look at, you look back at them. It reminds you of like the, the family snaps that you've got. Um, and it's just great to have something to hold, you know, it's like a tangible object. It's not living somewhere on a hard drive there's knots and ones, it's an actual physical object which you can hold and that's quite nice. So yeah, just going to go through the ones that I got then. Um, this was uh, one from the dam, I don't know if, you can, if it's focusing on that. Um, so yeah, the, these dams were actually used, if you've seen the Dam Busters movie, you'll know that this is where they tested the bombs the dam buster bombs and um, yeah they're really interested in these kind of fortifications and dams uh, all around the reservoir great for taking photos amongst the foliage um, like I said sometimes you get these areas if you notice on the actual kind of structure of the, the kind of fort tower thing on the, along the dam there you see it's a bit overexposed on the tower and it's lost a bit of the detail in the bricks and things but um, 
Yeah, overall, I don't mind this shot. I got a better one, actually. Uh, well, I think it's better, which is um, this one. So I took this in a, in a portrait format. Um, and I like the way that the trees are framing this one. So you've got um, a bit more detail on the towers there. And um, the trees around the edge just creates that really nice frame. There's a little bit of a blue, uh, I don't know what that is in the middle. Right in the middle it's like a lens flare or something I think. And they all look very cool, that's the tone of this, um, of how the, the film develops. It looks very cool, even though it was a really warm day. It's definitely not, it doesn't, the temperature of the photo looks quite cool. So yeah, prefer the portrait one I think overall. And then, this is another portrait one, which I took um, just of the reservoir itself. I think this one, uh, I don't mind the middle section of it, but there's too much, um, there's too much dark area in the bottom right. Um, I, have to, I was kind of like, kind of trying to balance the sky because I've got so much sky in there and trying to balance with the bottom area. But the way that the um, the Polaroids come out, the, it, the the blacks are very saturated and you can't see a lot of detail in the dark area, and it just looks like a really big dark patch at the bottom there. So I would probably maybe crop it in if I could. I mean, obviously I can't. Cause <laughs> It is what it is now, but yeah, if it was cropped in a bit, I think that would look a bit nicer. So here's another one. Um, there was a little bit, a little section of the video where I was just shooting down onto a little kind of, almost like a little bay area, I suppose, next to the reservoir. And there was a young boy there just throwing stones into the water. Um, so I really like that human element of this picture. And uh, yeah, again, it is what it is. It's um, a little soft in places and but that just adds to the whole effect and I, I like the how the reservoir just like kind of goes into the distance there comes to a point and just draws your eye up onto the horizon line um, so yeah this is the one that I chose to submit for my challenge in the end um, I was quite pleased with the composition of this one you've got the tree on the left and that's kind of balanced out by the tree on the right and then the water just kind of lead your eye up and onto the horizon you've got those kind of mountain ranges in the background just giving a bit of interest in the sky above it so I was quite pleased with just yeah the general composition of that shot and there's a landscape as a Polaroid landscape goes <laughs> I'm fairly pleased with that and just a bit of a, an alternate kind of it was in a similar area to where that one was taken this one composition is not quite as good um, you've got those trees at the bottom, which is a bit of foreground interest, I suppose, but maybe they, they don't really work that well as a composition. But yeah, once it's taken, that's it. It's down. <laughs> it exists now. And finally, I've got um, this one. So I was talking about focus and you can't get too close with, with the instant camera. Um, or not the model I was using anyway. And I saw these really, really nice peacock butterflies. And there was loads of them all around the bank and they were landing on the thistles that were all around there and they were staying for quite a long time. So yeah, it would have been great if I'd had my macro lens, but you know, I had the Polaroid. Um, well, the instant camera keeps saying Polaroid. Uh, and then, and yeah, and this one was where I was trying to get a shot of the uh, peacock butterfly. So you'll see it's just out of focus there on the left hand side. So yeah, it didn't really work technically, but there is something nice about this shot. It looks, it's got something very summery about it. I think you've got the butterfly there and the softness just adds something. I don't know quite what it is, but it's like, a, I suppose, you know, if you were being poetic about it, it's like a romanticism, isn't it? It's, and you've got the flowers there in the background, which are in focus. And maybe it just says something about summer. So I thought I'd include this one. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, on the back of the video I released in midweek, I just want to say thanks again to everyone who subscribed. It's brilliant that I've got over 100 subscribers now. I never thought I'd get that many so quickly. Um, and if you're not a subscriber already um, and you've managed to get this far in the video without being a subscriber, then, you know, why not subscribe now? Hit the big red button down there saying subscribe. And uh, if you are a subscriber already, um, well, 
thanks again thanks for watching and that's all so uh, tune in for the midweek video I'm not sure what it's going to be yet but uh, I'll try and make it as interesting as possible and that's it so bye for now